So hello everyone. We're gathering once again to reflect on the scripture, to celebrate the Eucharist. And it's the 21st Sunday in ordinary time. We're moving along. School is beginning to start in different places. So the summer's over. We're looking into the fall. And we still gather and we still celebrate the Lord's presence. So let's prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we prepare ourselves to celebrate the Eucharist. We open our hearts to Christ who's present with each one of us. Uh, and we open our hearts to ask for healing and also for guidance. Uh, maybe today in a special way, uh, we can ask that Christ give us the strength and the courage we need to continue to build his church. So Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the everlasting sign and source of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with each one of us today as we open our hearts to you. Guide us, fill us with your wisdom. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And today, I'm just going to read the Gospel reading. It's short, but it's an important one. And it's one that I think we can think of in a number of ways. Uh, different traditions think of it in different ways. I think the Catholic Church looks at this in one way. Uh, the other Christian churches kind of look at it in another way. Uh, but if we put the two of us together, I think we come out with a good picture of what is being presented here today. So here's the gospel. And again, it's one that you know, and one that we read quite often in, in the course of the year. So Jesus went to the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus immediately said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. Okay, so one thing that's kind of interesting, Jesus is on his final journey to Jerusalem at this point in the Gospel of Matthew. So he's when kind of winding his way uh, to Jerusalem, which is in the south. This is in the north of, of Palestine, of Israel. And the way he gets to this place, Caesarea Philippi, is very illogical. He's, uh, he's on, on a road, basically, that goes to Jerusalem. He gets off the road and then he starts going north. So he's going north to go south. So you wonder, why is he, why is this little town, this Caesarea Philippi, so important to him uh, that he wants to bring the disciples there? So let's think about that. Uh, so he's, he's bringing them to this special spot. Yeah. So we study an important moment today in the life of Jesus and his disciples. Time was getting short. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem for the final time. His death was near. 
he went out of his way to bring the disciples to a very special place separate from Jewish territory. He could have some quiet and peace there, away from the crowds. At Caesarea Philippi, he could focus on his disciples and continue to instruct them quietly. But why did Jesus choose this particular place? It was a sacred place. There were many shrines to the ancient Syrian and Canaanite gods scattered throughout the area. There was a cave there with a deep well that Jews celebrated as the source of the sacred Jordan River. The Greeks believed that the god Pan was born in that cave. There was also a great white marble temple dedicated by Herod's son Philip to the emperor god Caesar. Hence, the city was named Caesarea Philippi. This site, revered by Greeks, Romans, and Jews alike, focused the religious energy of the whole world in a way. In this context, Jesus asked two most important questions. Who do people say I am? And who do you say I am? They answered the first one easily. Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. In answer, the disciples pulled out the big guns. John the Baptist was executed by Herod, but Herod feared that Jesus may be John raised from the dead. Others thought that Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Malachi that predicted the prophet Elijah's return to prepare the world for the day of the Lord, the time of global purification in preparation for the Messiah. Others thought that Jesus was Jeremiah returning to announce the liberation of the Jewish people. Many people viewed Jesus as a prophet and this is important because it had been 400 years since the prophet had spoken in Israel. Jesus' message of the coming of the kingdom of God rang with hope. But Jesus was looking for a deeper answer to his questions. So he asked, who do you say that I am? Peter's answer was immediate and unambiguous. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's just what Jesus wanted to hear. He was on his final journey to Jerusalem. The cross was drawing near. How successful was his mission? Did anybody really understand who he was and what his mission was? People saw him as a holy man and a prophet. That was a start, but there was more, much more. In a flash of insight, Peter got it. He saw Jesus, the anointed Messiah, but even more, he saw the Son of God. This wasn't only an observation, it was a profession of faith and most importantly, by his profession, he became the first stone of the new edifice that Jesus was constructing. You are Peter. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Peter interpreted these words of Jesus for the early church in his first letter, where he says, you also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house for the holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Peter's message is meant for us to hear. Sometimes we think of this passage as saying that Peter is the rock, the foundation that the church is built upon. But actually, Peter 
is the first rock of the new edifice, the church. Many more rocks are needed to complete the building. Jesus will be the capstone completing the structure. Remember Paul's teaching. You are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through Jesus, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred to the Lord. In him, you are being built together into a dwelling place for God in the Spirit. So today, we've been called to the city of Caesarea Philippi to be challenged by the most important question we can be asked. Who do you say I am? Maybe today, as we think of this very important question that really gave Jesus that energy he needed to move toward Jerusalem when he knew Peter got it, and from Peter that was going to spread. Right? So we're at a moment where there's just one stone of that structure, Peter. Right? And Peter's going to have problems, that's fine, but he saw it and he got it. I think today, uh, our journey to Caesarea Philippi is asking us, do you get it? Do you really get it? And are you willing to be a stone in this new structure? Right? That's that second part is so important. Are you ready to be a stone in the new structure? And that's what I leave with you, that thought. Question yourself, question your own faith. Right? So it's easy to say Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus uh, is, is the Son of God, but does that pull you into that dynamic of being a stone in the structure of the church? And what does that mean to you, being a stone in that structure? Good thoughts for today. So let's gather our petitions now. So with confidence in the Father who loves each one of us, we bring our petitions today. And we pray first of all for Pope Francis. May the Lord bless him with good health and grant him the strength to shepherd the flock God has entrusted to him. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for those to whom God has given great authority. May they exercise that authority for the benefit of every person. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for peace among all nations and all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for students and teachers and staff uh, returning to the school. May they be blessed with a deeper knowledge of God and the world we live in. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for our faith community. May we heed God's call to service and leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all who are ill and for all those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's pause, let's call to mind our personal intentions for today. Lord of wisdom and God of love, instill in us the empathy we need to extend our hands in mercy and kindness to one another. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> and we pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
Lord, accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the church. So merciful God, the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ made us your people. In your love, grant peace and unity to your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, it is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the Word through whom you made the universe, the Savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And so we join the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory as we say, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So Lord, you are holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended he took the cup again he gave you thanks and praise gave the cup to his disciples and said take this all of you and drink from it for this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant it will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven do this in memory of me the mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and make us grow in love together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, 
I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Lord, may this Eucharist increase within us the healing power of your love. May it guide and direct our efforts to please you in all things. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When the Mass is ended, let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. So perhaps if you're traveling uh, over Labor Day weekend, you can uh, join us uh, to celebrate the Mass on Sunday. Uh, and remember, it's on all day. It goes on at 9 in the morning, the Mass, and our website. And it goes uh, for the rest of the week. It'll be on the website. So you can watch Mass anytime during the day uh, if you're away. Have a great week.